okay so here are the muscles of the back and try not to stress too much about the muscles of the back there's a lot of information it it is not easy to remember all the names so um you have to kind of have a little formula how to remember and certain important points so let's first start with here so the skin on the dorsum of the back on this area of the back the skin is supplied by dorsal rami the word cutaneous means going to skin if you remember when we did the spinal cord um and we were talking about spinal nerves um at that time you remember the here is the cord and this is the dorsal root here's the ventral root dorsal root ganglion this is the nerve and you had dorsal ramus and ventral ramus and these rami so this was dorsal ramus this was ventral ramus they were mixed that means they had both sensory and motor fibers so the sensory fibers which are in this dorsal ramus that's what supplies this region okay so it really supplies a strip of skin about that much because if you remember the dorsal ramus was very thin compared to the ventral ramus and also the dorsal rami supply the intrinsic muscles of the back and these intrinsic are the deep muscles so intrinsic muscles of the back is what is supplied by dorsal rami now let's look at the back muscles so they are present in three groups there's a superficial group and these really are concerned with the upper limb so they move the humerus or they move the scapula so when you take a uh, when you peel off the skin the first set of muscles that you see um uh, is this huge muscle here which is known as the trapezius it's called the trapezius because when mus the two muscles of both sides are put together it looks like a trapezoid figure you see that like that so that's why this muscle is the trapezius this is the muscle of this side and this is the muscle of this side whenever you do muscles i mean not so important now but whenever you do muscles you always should know where the muscle is present um so location of the muscle you must always know its nerve supply and quite obviously you must know its action or actions depending on how much how many actions it has so just up here since this is given in your a book and you may be asked so um, this is the trapezius so you should be able to recognize this you can see it it arises from this central region right from the skull it goes all the way down till the 12th thoracic vertebra so it arises from the spines of all the vertebra right up to the 12th thoracic arises from the skull and there's a ligament here which you will see later called ligamentum nuchae then this muscle kind of fans out triangularly you can see that so these upper fibers fan out and they go to the clavicle they also go to a part of the scapula which is known as the acromion so up here this area is the acromion the middle fibers go directly across as you can see and then the lower fibers go from below upwards and they attach to a part of the scapula which is called the spine of the scapula so for now what you need to know is that it comes from the skull and the spines of the vertebrae up to t12 vertebra and it is attached to the clavicle and the scapula so when this muscle contracts when the two muscles on either side contract you can understand contract means they shorten what they are going to do is pull the neck backwards because if this muscle shortens it's going to have the neck and this head go backwards which means it's going to kind of extend the neck area and what they can also do is they can kind of pull the scapula closer to the midline so they can pull it this way because you can't move the the vertebral column towards your arm but you can move this towards that so they do that and these lower fibers will kind of pull this down pull these this scapula downwards and another thing that it will do is if these muscles act and you look here so this is like a fixed point here if the muscle acts it will pull this up which happens when you shrug your shoulders okay so you can test that put your hand on on this part of your 
neck and kind of try to lift it up and you'll feel the trapezius tensing. The second muscle that you see here is this huge muscle here, this big muscle which is called the latissimus dorsi. You will probably be asked to identify any of these two muscles. This latissimus dorsi is what is called lats which you use in the gym. You, you know you have that bar which you pull down so imagine um, a bar up here and you're kind of holding on to that bar so that bar and you're holding on to that bar so that means this is going up so the lats are actually stretched at that point so what it helps is when it shortens it helps you to pull your arm down by the side of the body the nerve supply and that's why I have this kind of highlighted the nerve supply of the trapezius is through a cranial nerve the 11th cranial nerve which is called the accessory nerve the latissimus dorsi is supplied by the ventral ramus. Remember, we just talked of dorsal ramus in the previous slide, which supplied the skin. But now these, since they don't belong to the back, truly, they're not back muscles, truly. They're muscles of the upper limb, just happen to be present posteriorly. These muscles are supplied, this muscle, latissimus dorsi, is supplied by the anterior Rami. and I'm not sure if you need to know it but well I'll just tell you there is a nerve called the thoracodorsal nerve and maybe the way you can remember is this is present on the thorax and it is present on the dorsal or posterior surface of the thorax so thoracodorsal nerve so that's a good way to remember what is the nerve supply remember the trapezius is supplied by this cranial nerve the accessory Let's go to the next set of muscles. So if you now cut away the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi, again, you still have superficial group of muscles. And these are much smaller muscles. And they attach to the vertebral column up here, either the spines or the transverse processes of the, vertebral, uh, of the vertebrae. And the next point of attachment is the scapula, as you can see here. So they attach above to the superior angle of the scapula or this part here which is called the medial border of the scapula. These three muscles are called and the writing is rather small. So this is called levator scapulae. Levator scapulae. The second muscle which is present here is called rhomboid minor and the third one below is called rhomboid major. Now in anatomy always try to find a reason for naming muscles and if you look at this this muscle levator scapulae it's attached to this superior angle and it's attached here to this transverse process when it contracts what it's going to do is pull the scapula upwards so it's going to elevate it the word levator means to elevate so you can see how it's getting its name levator scapulae these two muscles the rhomboidus minor and major we always call a muscle minor and another one major based on size the minor is smaller than the major and they're called rhomboid minor and major because of the rhomboid shape the quadrilateral shape so if you remember your geometry that's how it is so this is the minor this is the major okay these three muscles they are attached on the dorsal aspect of the scapula so their nerve supply is dorsal scapular nerve and again this is from the ventral rami remember no do I have not mentioned dorsal rami at all over here because the muscular branches of the dorsal rami supply the intrinsic muscles of the back. All of these which are to do with the limb or the respiratory system, they are from the ventral ramus. So here I, I've written thoracodorsal for the nerve supply of latissimus dorsi. So that was the superficial group and they control movements of upper limb and scapula. So again, just to review, go back. So we had trapezius, latissimus dorsi, and then here we had levator scapulae, um, rhomboid minor, and rhomboid major. Okay. Yes.
Yes, the nerve supply of all these three muscles is the dorsal scapula. How are you going to remember? If you, you know, the way, always find a reason for it. These muscles, can you see, they are attached on the dorsal surface of the scapula. Dorsal meaning posterior aspect of the scapula. So therefore, dorsal scapular nerve. This latissimus dorsi was attached not only, it was attached on the dorsal surface of the thorax. So therefore, thoracodorsal nerve. Got it? Okay. Yes, it looks, uh, it looks like that they are not going to the front. They are actually attached to this margin. They don't go in front. They are attached to this margin. So they are present on the dorsal aspect and they are attached to the margin. They don't go in front. They are attached right at the margin. Well, that muscle on the anterior aspect of the scapula, you do not see from this point. It's a muscle which you will do when you, if you do the upper limb. this muscle no, this yeah. yes that that is a muscle called serratus anterior which actually you're right it comes from the it arises from the ribs and actually goes kind of winds around as you can see along the thoracic cage passes onto the anterior aspect of the scapula and it is attached along the border of the scapula here but on the anterior aspect just as these guys are attached on the posterior aspect Okay, but you don't need to know this muscle. Okay. Okay, this is the intermediate muscles, intermediate layer. So after you stripped off all of those muscles, then you see these small muscles. And these muscles are, have a respiratory function. And again, they are supplied by the anterior rami of nerves, which are called intercostal. Intercostal meaning between ribs. Costa for ribs, inter meaning between. These are very small muscles. As you can see, they are present on top and they are present below. If you look at these muscles, they look like little strips and often we, you know, it kind of looks a little serrated. That means, you know, if I was to draw it, can you see it looks a little serrated like that? So these muscles are known as serratus. The word serratus meaning serrate like or like the teeth of a comb. Since they are present on the posterior aspect, they are called serratus posterior. There are two groups. There is one on top, there is one below. So this one is called serratus posterior superior. This one is called serratus posterior inferior. Okay. I have just written over here that they arise from C7 to T3 and then you, know, you can see they are going towards the ribs. So arise from the spines of C7 to T3. These arise from spines of T11 to L3 and go to the to the ribs. You, I don't think you need to remember this because it's impossible to kind of really remember this. What, what you can see is that these are lower down, these are higher up and where do they come from? Where do they go? They come from the spines and go towards the ribs. They come from the spine. So these go downwards. These come from the spines and go upwards towards the ribs. Okay. Then we come to the third group and these are what are called the intrinsic muscles of the back. So these are the true or intrinsic. Intrinsic, whenever we use the word intrinsic, that means they are concerned with the area we are talking about. So this is intrinsic muscles of the back. These will be supplied by dorsal or posterior rami, the muscular branches of the dorsal or posterior rami. Remember the cutaneous supply, just that strip of skin on the back. And they are present in three main groups or layers and with another sort of extra one which is on top, uh, you know, which is kind of not a separate layer, but it kind of continues with these third group, okay? So let's see how we will classify them. The first one is present only in the head and neck area. So it doesn't extend through the rest of the vertebral column. It's only present in the head and neck area. Since they are present on the back of the head and the neck, they naturally, when they shorten, they will, con they will cause an extension. That means if you tilt your head backwards, that's what they're going to do. 
So these are extensors and they also, if a muscle of one side acts, they will rotate the neck to the other side. So these are extensors and rotators of the head and neck. The word capitus means head. Whenever you see the word capitus, it means head. Services means neck for cervical spine. So these muscles are, that's why they are muscle extensors of the head and neck. And the muscles that you see have a name called splenius. Splenius means bandage. So if you look at this muscle, it looks like a bandage. And this is the most superficial of the deep group. So it's the first group that you will see. And if you think about it, if you were to tie a bandage on someone, you obviously will have the bandage on the outside. So that's how the splenius, capitus and services are the first of the deep group of muscles. And, you know, your books mention they are called spino transfer sales, which means, again, it goes from the spine to the transverse process of the vertebra. So if I was to draw it, if you remember a vertebra, if you remember the parts of a vertebra, this is the transverse process, that's the spine and that's the vertebral column. So they go from the, sp uh, transverse, uh, from the spine to the transverse process, not necessarily of the same vertebra, but the one above. But they go obliquely across like that. Okay, So that is the splenius, meaning bandage, capitus to the head and services to the uh, cervical part of the vertebral column. The next one are the extensors and rotators of the vertebral column. This is the largest group and they are divided into two parts. One is called erector spiny. It has three parts to it and I purposely put it as I, L, S and I'll go back to it so that when you review you can kind of just look back and see what the names are. And the second group, which is much smaller, which is known as transverso spinalis. Now here, this is the opposite of this. That means now the muscles are going from the transverse process to the spine. So the direction is a little different, okay? Transverse process to the spine. And they go in the kind of opposite direction to these guys. And again, we have some muscles and I've written, kind of made a little acronym for you. The third group are really, really short muscles. They are present bit. Yes. Are you going to go back and explain? Yes, I will. I have, I have pictures to show you this, but I've just given you this. Yeah. The third group are called interspinales. That, mean, that means they are between the spinous processes of two or three vertebrae. So interspinales. So just by the name, you should be able to tell where do these muscles attach. They are between the spinous processes of the vertebrae intertransferseri which means between the transverse processes of the vertebrae okay so you can see how the name itself is self explanatory and lastly we'll do sub occipital muscles which i'll show you and these are of two they are in two categories one is called rectus capitus posterior capitus means head Posterior means on the posterior aspect. The word rectus means straight. So these muscles are straight and they are present on the posterior aspect of the head. The other one is obliquus capitus. That means it's an oblique muscle present in relation to the head. Okay, And they are supplied by the dorsal ramus of C1. So now let's look at these muscles in detail. And before we do that, these deep muscles are enclosed in a fascia. fascia. You remember fascia, the deep fascia. They are enclosed in a fascia to separate them from those superficial muscles. For example, you saw latissimus dorsi up here and then you know there are other muscles there. So this is that deep group of muscles and they are separated from the others and even a muscle of the abdominal cavity by a fascia which is called thoracolumbar fascia. As the name itself suggests, it's, bit, it's in the thorax and the lumbar region of the back. And if you look at it, it has three layers. This is the posterior most layer. This is the middle layer. And this is the anterior layer. And so don't sort of waste too much time trying to think too much about this. It's just a fascia which encloses the deep intrinsic muscles of the back and separates it from other groups. And if you look at this, this erector spiny, which is one of the intrinsic muscles, which layers is it present between? 
the posterior layer and the middle layer. So you can see how the picture itself tells you a lot. Okay. Notice where the posterior layer is attached to the spine of the scapula and the middle and the anterior layers are attached to the transverse process of the, uh, sorry not spine of the scapula, spine of the vertebra. The middle and anterior layers are attached to the transverse processes and these layers all meet laterally. Now let's go to the muscles. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do this group, okay, the splenius services and capitis. So remember I told you it looks like a bandage. So you can see this, it really looks like a bandage. It is, they were called spinotransfer cells going from the spinous process to the transverse processes. So splenius capitis will be higher because it's going from the spine to the skull capitis. It has to go to the skull. So this is the splenius capitis of this side, splenius capitis of this side. It arises as you can see from the spines and a ligament which is present here called ligamentum nuchi. It's right in the midline. And the second one which is lower is splenius services. So it arises from the spines and goes to the transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae. So these are the two muscles. Understand that when they contract or shorten, what they will do is, again, they will cause the head when both sides contract, they will kind of, your neck goes backwards. If you were to tilt your neck back, that's what they're going to do. So they're extensors of the head and neck. And if the muscle of one side contracts, imagine if this muscle shortens, what is it going to do? It's going to pull the skull this way, right? So it will cause lateral rotation of the head. So that's what is their action. These are intrinsic muscles, so they are supplied by the dorsal rami. Yes. Yes, and you know you don't really need to remember so much that remember they are both arising from the upper they are or they extend up to the upper thoracic vertebrae because at this point I, I doubt anybody is going to ask you but yes capitis will obviously be above services okay yeah let's look at the next one which was erector spiny and again to go back here this is we are doing this group and remember I told you this extensors and rotators of the vertebral column this is the largest group and they're in two parts there's one called erector spiny and there's one which is a much smaller one called transverso spinalis so I'm going to divide it into 2A and 2B. So to look at this, 2A, which is the erector spiny, it's the largest group. So it extends all the way from the sacrum right up to, right up here to the cervical region. So therefore, when these muscles will contract, you can see they'll extend your back. So when you flex your trunk, your vertebral column, like you bend forwards, these muscles are stretched. So when they contract, what they do is they help to straighten you, okay? And if you were to do hyperextension, so like, you know, you bend absolutely backwards, then these muscles act a little more. Now they are in three groups. They are three parts, these muscles. As you can see, you can see this is one part, this is the second part, and this is the third part, okay? So they kind of split up when you look up here, and their names are based on where they are present. So first let's look at these three groups. So if you start from lateral to medial, so this one is first, this one is the intermediate and this is third, medial most. The way I remember it is I, L, S. So a mnemonic you can have is I love the spine. So from lateral to medius. Lateral most is a muscle which is known as iliocostalis. So, and the way to remember I is iliocostalis. If you see, it's going from the ilium or hip bone to the ribs, costa. So, iliocostalis. If it is present in the lumbar region, we call it iliocostalis lumborum. When it's present in the thoracic region, we call it iliocostalis thoracis. So, you can see that, uh, you know, how they are named based on where they are present. So, this is the lateral most of the erector spiny. The middle one, which is the L, is known as longismus. 
because it's very long and very large. The longismus part is the largest. So that's why L for largest. So again, longis you have longismus uh, thoracis, longismus services. So you know it goes up based on where it is present. That's what it will be called. And then the medial most, these are small muscles. You can see they're really tiny. These are known as spinalis. So there's S and S, spinalis for smallest. So they are right in the middle. And again, their name will be based, if it's on the thorax, it's spinalis thoracis. If it's in the cervical region, spinalis services. Okay. So iliocostalis, longismus, and spinalis. This is the erector spiny group. So that's what you should know. What are the parts of the erector spiny? They are intrinsic muscles, so they will be supplied by the dorsal rami. They are in the back, so they will extend the vertebral column. Okay? Let's look at the second part. Remember, there was a second part to it. This one, which, is, which are smaller muscles, because they go from the transverse process to the spine. They don't go travel longitudinally. So... These are transverse or spinalis. So you can see, look at look at this picture here. They're so tiny. Very, very small muscles. Okay. And there are again three in them. The three are going from kind of above downwards and also from medial to lateral. The S stands for semispinalis. So when it's present in the head region, it's called semispinalis capitis. The neck it will be called semispinalis cervices. Uh, then semispinalis thoracis. So you can see how they are named. The M stands for the middle part is called multifidus, which is best seen in the lumbar region. And the R stands for rotators. These are small or big. So they go from the transverse process to the spines of maybe two vertebrae or if they are longer, they go from the transverse process to the spines. You know, they cross, they span about three or four vertebrae. Okay. So I think you just need to remember these names of the transversal spinalis. They are very small. They go from the transverse process to the uh, spines. So they go in this direction. As you can see, they are all going upwards and medially. They are semispinalis, multifidus, and rotators. Okay, so that's how the SSM are. All supplied by the uh, dorsal rami. They're very small, so they can't extend the vertebral column as much as they rotate. They help to rotate the vertebral column when they act. Then we have the third group. So if we went back, and looked here, remember this short segmental, which are between the spines and between the transverse processes. So these are really short uh, muscles. And you can see here, these are the intertransverse cirri. You can't see the interspinals up here. Um, so, you know, they are really, really short. They kind of span between the transverse process. If you're just asked, what do intertransverse cirri, where are they present between the transverse processes? Where are the interspinals present between the spinous processes? So they'd be up here. And then since your book also mentioned, you have an area in the head right close up here. Um, these are muscles are just below the head. So they're called suboccipital. This is the occipital bone. This here is the occipital bone. So these muscles here are present just below the occipital bones. And this is a big an uh, um, enlarged view. So therefore they are called suboccipital muscles and they actually act, form a little triangle if you look at which is known as the suboccipital triangle. So let's look at these muscles. These are called rectus. Rectus meaning straight. Capitus meaning going towards the head. Posterior minor meaning it's a small muscle on the posterior aspect. So here it is rectus capitus posterior minor. The next one is rectus capitus posterior major. And here it is rectus capitus posterior major, much larger. And then the two other groups are obliquus capitus. There's one which is inferior. So it's called obliquus capitus inferior. 
there's one which is superior this is called obliquus capitus superior and if you looked at the suboccipital triangle even if you didn't weren't I mean you don't have to memorize it if you looked at the boundaries of the suboccipital triangle I think you can figure it out yourself the upper medial boundary is this rectus capitus posterior major the upper lateral boundary is this obliquus capitus superior and the inferior boundary is this obliquus capitus inferior okay so that's why just looking at pictures kind of tells you, you don't have to really memorize but of course you do have to know the uh, where they are present so the obliquus are present below and laterally the rectus are present above and medially these muscles are if you look at this nerve here it is supplied and that it shows you so that's why it's so important to pay attention by the posterior ramus of C1 again posterior rami because these are still muscles of the back and the head so the posterior ramus of the first cervical vertebra so um, any questions so far so I, I would say um, if you kind of looked after this this is a good review part this uh, slide here is a good review part because it tells you all the muscles so here you can name the muscles since you now know so it would be iliocostalis L stands for longismus and S st stands for spinalis and SSMR stands for semispinalis multifidus and R is rotators so you can see the three you know layers and then the two parts to this Okay.